This is the director. So if the movie sucks, it's his fault. It's all my fault. Yeah, Nathan's here. Uh, he's, he's videotaping me talking to you. <laughs> Why make a fan film? Just because, uh, well, it's fun. I've been a Star, Star Wars fan since 1977, and when I saw Troops come out, from that point on, I'm like, you know, it'd be cool to do that someday. In 1998, 10 years ago, there was a group of people from Minnesota that went out to the desert in Arizona and decided they're going to film their own fan, fan film. They produced it, they put it on the internet, and they sent a copy of the George Lucas, fearing that lawyers would, you know, just like in Star Trek, Viacom sues Star Trek people who infringe upon their copyright. Um, George Lucas, although, said, you know, you can work in my universe as long as you don't go making money. Allowed to recoup anything. You're, it's all a loss. You are not allowed to, to sell the film and say, I'm just recouping my loss. Not no mileage. No. You're not allowed to pay anybody. No staff member, no crew member, no actors can be paid, or else you violate the copyright law. Yeah, the Florida. You heard about the Florida people who are making a movie that's also two hours long? Oh, the NASA guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we found out that he's actually paying for people to do his special effects, which is a no-no. That's against the rules. You're not allowed. That's a Lucasfilm thing. You're not allowed to pay anybody. So. And the uh, thing is, <laughs> we saw some of the demo reels. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we have nothing to worry about. <laughs> could we, could we? Yeah. And I'm glad that you keep that stuff here. I don't know why. You know, it's one of those things that I accumulate and I just thought of. Who, who accumulates zombie scars in their desk? Well, what else do you do with them? Uh, okay, I'll put them in my desk. There we go. <laughs> no, but it's not like a cracker that you find. <laughs> what do you people do here? I think this is going to be in the tour. <laughs> <laughs> We're here where there's actually Star Wars shooting today. It's pretty bad. Um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, some people that work on my crew. Most of us work at Fermi Lab, and we all, most of us work a five week rotation that are not on the same crew. This is the first time Dave's been able to come because we work a five week rotation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Gets into the right spot. Dave is my technical director. Uh, he has a degree in uh, technical theater. Much like that, straight across yes. like that. Yeah, I think that's it. Because I, I don't really want to ruin this whole beer, but I want it obvious. It's going to be like this and coming across to about right there. Okay. This is a new fad. Uh huh. And then we can etch your initials on the other side. Max Monning, he's one of uh, he plays the Jedi, and 
he's one of the ones on shift rotation. Margaret is my producer. Without her, I couldn't get all any of this scheduled. So we got Max and a clone trooper coming out. Okay. We're gonna have to pick up the pace. Yes. So trying to line up people every five weeks is pretty insane. And that's why it's taken so far two years for <laughs> filming <laughs> principal <laughs> photography. I think I brought something better for your Wookiee to have. Yeah, and my Wookiee just came so out. Ah! Uh, my Wookiee came so out. I had a six and a half foot high Wookiee. This is my oh. steampunk railgun. Oh, that is freaking awesome! <laughs> wow, like the back end of a Milwaukee Sawzall or something. <laughs> <laughs> it ejects shells as it fires. Mm -hmm. Heavy. Mercy. Yeah, you, you don't want to know how much that that brass is worth. <laughs> you gotta be a Wookiee to carry this. You do have to be a Wookiee. As people started, as, as our uh, group at Fermi Lab you know, was evolving, uh, we had people who liked to make props. And they just did it as a hobby. You know, they make blasters, all types of stuff. They just come up, you know, come into the control room, hey, look what I made. It's like, hey, that's pretty cool, that's pretty tech. You know, that's a lot of talent to, to actually just go out and say, I'm gonna build some type of futuristic looking thing. We met somebody who liked to do costumes. And eventually we came to the realization that, you know, there's a lot of talent here. We could actually make a film. Action. Okay, fire. Take two. You're heading to the right just a tad. Or like press some of these buttons. Give some action. Yeah. That one right there. That was a learning experience. One shot, the last three seconds, took 33 takes. <laughs> Action. Cut. We finally got that done. We realized, you know, okay, that was a learning experience. The next shoot that we did, we expanded it. We went with, you know, one full scene, and that involved uh, Darth Vader or things like that. We started just basically building up all of our knowledge. That looked good. You shouldn't be an audition. People are, and you were just grateful to get the bodies. Oh, we were grateful to get the bodies. Um, we auditioned, Jim. My wife has uh, has an acting bag. This one, you put it to, to your shoulder and like that. This one works. But don't make the sounds because we'll pick those up. Choo, choo, choo. Do, do, do. Now, let's get one of you go like that, holding it like that and looking at Amy. Let's turn the actor who was our first actor for uh, uh, one of the rebels for the archaeologist ended up getting transferred anyway out to Atlanta, and so we had to re we had to recast the actor. So. Um, Jim, he's an engineer. Um, he just He's a Star Wars fan, he's also a musician. And he just decided, you know, I love Star Wars. And he saw it in the newspaper that we were casting. And he, goes, and he just basically sent an email saying, I'd like to try out. He was the only one that showed up. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is that when he did the audition, I thought of something here when okay. Laura and I were trying to figure it out is that Jared, that Jared could say, start to say, uh, well, the war, and then, then Laura could look over and say, don't answer that. Jim is the comic relief type of thing, and Laura's trying to keep the, Yariel's trying to keep the, you know, let's keep the uh, focus here. We gotta get to this place. We gotta, you know, save these people. And the banter between the two is just, just Fantastic. They have a really good report. And just leave it at that. Like just give them the look yeah, or she, yeah. she she could really punch her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she could, well she's got the she's gonna be bundled in there. But or she of course that would be a part of the slapstick one. Right. Mm -hmm. Like uh, just try start one up. Yeah. <laughs> to, to hit him and maybe give him the look. But yeah, I think yeah, we do need to change that line though. Which we, we could change it to don't answer that. Okay. So we could have Jim start to say uh, but the war has been, and then she's just got to. Yeah, and she'll say, "Don't answer that." Right. She's got to kind of talk over him and right. just have the upper hand and really. Right. Okay. 
So. All right, I'll make the change. Is that a timer? Oh yeah, that's okay. Okay, get ready. Got. Get ready. Here we go. Oh, I showed my nephew the footage that you had up online. I told him about the movie and was he's like, well, you know, what character are you playing? And I kind of described the character to him as a, you know, a kind of a Han Solo type character. And he goes, well, what do you do? I said, well, I'm an archaeologist. This 11 year old looks up at me and he goes, huh? So you're a smuggler, eh? <laughs> he said, no, I'm not a smuggler, I'm an archaeologist. And he goes, hmm, sounds like a smuggler to me. <laughs> so when, I sh when we looked at some of your footage on online, he said, yeah, you even look like a smuggler. Like, Come on, man. You just give me a break. I'm an archaeologist. Who just ha so happens to smuggle <laughs> when the opportunity presents itself. All right, do I look like a smuggler? An archaeologist smuggler. A learned smuggler. A learned smuggler. That's what I should use. <laughs> That's what I'll use with him next time. I am a learned smuggler. Watch your mouth, boy. You deserve a little more respect. All right. This, folks, is Jared in action. I'm off to my film shoot. End of the production. Yeah, I'll be a full blown prima donna and an addict. <clears throat> Just can't wait. <laughs> The only thing I'm not looking forward to is rehab. But now you can go on Dr. Drew and what about start a whole new time? career. But the book when tour, you, when you get yeah, I'm looking inside. forward to that. When you get into the side. Because that's, that's when I'll transfer, that's when I'll transition from a drug addict to a sex addict. Uh, that picture? Yeah, you think you will. Well, the old lady will dumb me. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> that's in the plan. Too. That's in the plan, too. So we do studio shoots in chroma key. Uh, mainly, they're just interior shots, whether they're shots inside of a TIE fighter, X-wing, uh, Imperial Palace shots. Um, we, we shoot here quite a bit, actually. Uh, probably 50% of our, of our uh, photography is actually with blue screen. Good morning. We have young Princess Leia's costume right here. It's your daddy. Okay. And your Tom? Yes. Oh, hi. Sorry. I'm Margaret. Hi. hi. Really nice to meet you. So we're just kind of working on the way up to the full yes, thing. Yes, the full thing. Just yeah. Okay. Close up. Okay. So right before I left, Bail, Leia, C-3PO, walking down that way. The guards will be right here. They'll be the escort. Mm -hmm. Yes. I sure can. Where'd you get these? From market. Okay, so he should look a little bit mm -hmm. older. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah. so that's good. So he'll just have to thin out his right. upper lip. He's going to be better at going down on the ramp. Hey! 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 Actually, there's a group of people out there. Uh, a lot of them work at Motorola. They actually build these. Uh, there's one guy in Bolingbrook who has a, an R2-D2 that is exact. Doors open, makes all the sounds, it's radio control. There's a guy in Wisconsin who has a purple R2 unit, uh, R2-S5, which has also been a part of, uh, part of our uh, shoot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, there he is. Oh, there we go. Uh, Thank you. Right, let's see how advanced this droid really is. <laughs> Can, can, it, can it overcome our power cords? Well, my eyes lit up, or do you want to do that? Light them up. That was my mom. I just okay. thought that was going to be on camera. There's going to be close up. We're doing the level. We would see it. Okay. So, yeah, you could. Yeah. No problem. thing? Oh, that's cool. Wow. Was the original costume like that? Do you know? Yeah. Oh, it wasn't really. Wow, that's yeah, it's funny is that I never noticed it until oh. after I started putting it together and watching and uh -huh. comparing. And you can actually see scenes where his pelvis actually bends. Really? No way. Because it's not solid. Cool. Which is, is much better. My original pelvis was two-piece back form, mm -hmm. so it was solid. Mm -hmm. It sucked. 
Yeah. My original shoes were shells uh -huh. that went over shoes and yeah. cut my ankles up. Oh. I'm so That's, glad I got these. these wow. Are That's great. Oh yeah. It's literally on my face. Right up against your... There's no room for fans. Oh, man. And those little tiny holes right in the middle, that's all I see through. Really? Oh, my God. Are you going to need C-3PO with the sky bridge? Yes. Well, we can, stairs are bad. Okay. Yeah. What I, we can do... If it's upstairs, I need an elevator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, 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 there should be one okay. there. I like... Excellent. Go with it. So we're going to go for okay, a go. costume on. Like I said, I'm, my chest is so compressed, I right. can't... You can't breathe. breathe. Well, so okay. it's like I have to stop and... All right. Before I start hyperventilating. There's a little bit of a walk, so I don't want you to... Yeah. I mean, I can do it, mm -hmm. but it just takes some time. I'm, I'm just thinking if I could go and find a dolly that you could sit on, and we could wheel them there. Or stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to head uh, between, um, or you want to head towards the science building? Oh, uh, broke. Uh, broke. Broke, broke. Okay. Resident Droid. You probably don't need us. Looks like he's got lots more experience. <laughs> I have experience with three. Say that too loud. Too much information. <laughs> <laughs> Furries are scary. They can be. I don't mean like Chewbacca. Oh, come on, they're pussy cats. It's like as bad as a corset. It is. Except I bet you I'm dressed like Christ. Yeah, friend's done too much. Are you okay? Okay. Are you okay? Can't Can you talk. breathe? I think you have to go He can't talk off. right now. Until, cause if he does, you're never going to get it. <laughs> Got it. It's in. Uh, no? Yes. Oh shoot. shoot. Hold on, let me let him get another breath so he can so he can exhale. Yeah. Alright, let me get the You wanna try a little bit? The hardest thing is this right Okay. Here. Here, Here, hold on. Go. Okay, this has gotta come up a little bit. Okay, Daryl, I, I think we may have it now. Now this should just go through in, right? Yep. Got it. Because there's no bolt in here. Right. Five people to get seated in the dress. Hold on. Right. Uh, I held my breath as long as I could. Sky bridge right out here outside of this building. We filmed the uh, that sky bridge, doubling it as a treating it as a uh, basically a sky bridge going to a ship. Skyway. Okay, and then I'll need you out of frame. We can actually we can actually tell that that's a person laying there. The guards look fine. What was that? What was that? What was that? I heard a snap. No, that was the leg guard. He's getting better. Going up down. Hey. Okay. 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 I'm leaving a trail and then find my way home. She should have the animal crackers right now. It's awesome. I'm going to have you look directly at Bale. Okay, so Princess, you look at Bale. Okay, when you see your lines. All right. Right. Okay. Action! Once she steps foot on Barada Prime, Kreef will turn her over to the Empire. Cut. <laughs> One more. That was really good. One more. Talk to Fermilab. 
about filming there, the first thing they said is, you will need a $500,000 insurance policy. And we're like, no. <laughs> Bye. You will see you later. Well then, you know, just, you know, we were trying to find other places to shoot, and I went back over to public relations, and I sat down with the head of public relations, and she, uh, she goes, wait a minute, how many people from Fermilab are on this? over 50%. She goes, well then I'm just going to write it that it's an employee event. <laughs> there is no need for a lawyer and, and no need for insurance policy because the lawyer was getting involved for Fermilab. We're like, no, no, that's okay. We'll see you later. But then she, she told the lawyer, ah, this is an event that, you know, the employees are going out having fun. Whether or not they're dressing up, well, hey, okay. <laughs> rise sticking out uh, beyond the trees. who says they're going to do a fan film on the forums, they say is there a forest involved. Uh, just because 99% of them, that's, you can go into a forest, you can film, and you can't see the road, you know, that's 50 feet ahead. Uh, luckily at Fermilab, we have wide open spaces. There's, it's 6,800 acres, uh, most of it being prairie, most of it being burned once a year. And uh, that makes for some pretty good uh, uh, effects as well, background plates, uh, when we shoot. Uh, we were lucky, the day that we shot when we were building on location last April, they actually were doing a prairie burn. And you can't time this stuff. They, it has to be a perfect day for uh, uh, that department to get out and actually start uh, prairie burns. Uh, because you don't want it to be too windy, can't be soggy. Uh, so we actually had, you know, in one scene where a Jedi is running towards the crash, we actually had huge amounts of billowing smoke. It, it, it just lined up perfectly. Yeah, for free. <laughs> we had a smoke machine, uh, just high power smoke machine, had it billowing smoke out of this while we were filming.
built the set, this is the crash scene uh, where TIE fighters have basically shot down this ship, it has two rebels in it, uh, Jedi comes up, cuts them out, uh, type of, you know, shot set. Stormtroopers, some Imperial techs. Because I guess they all have different outfits. Yeah. And then there's this kind of a small battle. It's not the big one that's going to have a small battle. I brought the, the tech uniform. I brought a, I don't know, extra, I, I recognize it. Yeah. I got my pauldron. Yeah, I didn't bring a pauldron. You I was the, um, regular yeah. Stormtrooper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Right. just have this. I just brought in case somebody needed it. Yeah. We had pizza from Pizza Hut, Rosati's. Um, we had so much food that we had to throw some of it away, unfortunately. We had a massage therapist volunteer to come out. So she came out and she had a tent set up and every stormtrooper who was out there in their hot armor could come out and, I need my massage. Okay. Pretty much down here. Oh, well, you're going to have a long day, so we want to make sure that you're there. Okay. Okay. All right. Life of a director is a hard one, eh? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all loosened up now? Yes. Okay. They, they, they got involved, and uh, one of the one of the guys, when he first got there, he goes, I've been on fan films before. I don't expect much out of this. We're going to be standing around. You guys won't know what you're doing. He had, I was surprised. I'm like, okay, well, that's your opinion. Afterwards, he goes, you guys were on the ball. You had a choreographer. You had food. He goes, and of course the, mas the masseuse just topped it off. <laughs> so, uh, Bruce out there is going to uh, put all you guys, set you up, go to the props run. The white guy. I'm the white guy. Guy was supposed to pull a blaster on the on the uh, Jedi. His lightsaber cuts it, and then he pushes him back. Wow! Break oh, my God! That's good. Take one of the old Kenner 1977 yeah. like ones, it. which the 501st tried to get all their hands on. Um, essentially, cut it in half, put some metal in between it, and use gaffer's tape to hold it together. A lot of times, okay, we're rolling. Yeah, just falls right off. <laughs> but then you get the beauty shots, right? Where you have it actually stay on there. The guy pulls it up, and Max comes along. Bam! Pieces go flying. Perfect shot. When that happened, it turned out we had like 40 spectators behind us, and people just started clapping. We didn't know that there were people behind us. <laughs> Go get that. Right. Turn out oh, I have to say, that's one of the funniest things from, from that shoot in April was, okay, everybody run out onto the field and pull up your trooper that you're assigned to. <laughs> that was great. Jedi Knights of the Dark Side. Force descended on Batavia today. It was the start of production of the fan movie, The Forgotten Realm. It's the brainchild of Fermilab physicist and movie buff Darren Crawford is producing a two and a half hour Star Wars film in the suburbs. Today they spent a lot of time practicing a lightsaber action scene. Crawford's using his own money for the project. He says it's a dream come true. 
I'm a Star Wars fan, have been ever since 1977. Uh, Star Wars came out on my 10th birthday, so <laughs> I've been a fan ever since. Fan films such as this can do it because George Lucas has liberal copywriting rules. He created Star Wars, as you probably know. He always allowed fans to add to the storyline as long as they don't make money on the projects. Crawford says he will not, and his actors and crew are volunteers. He hopes to release the film in a couple of years. Curtain number one. Yeah. <laughs> Is the commander stuff on, Darren, or...? Yes. Okay. Oh, you got the blaster, too. That, the, the pistol. The skirt. And the, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I don't mind calling it a skirt. <laughs> My girdle. Of course, I had to have the high top shoes instead of the shoes that were sliding because I thought it looked more authentic. Amazing those troopers got anything done, eh? No kidding. You think they slept in their armor? Yeah, because we really want to take this on and put it off all the time. It's just easier to sleep. That we have a Darth Vader who is 6'5. His name's Ted O'Sullivan. He has the costume, he's built it over the years. He's part of the 501st, which is a costuming group, Star Wars costuming group. He goes to parades, whatever functions the 501st have here just in, in uh, Chicagoland. And in Chicagoland, they have a good 400 members. Not everybody who has a costume, you know, you think that, oh, hey, there's a fan film, I got a costume. I want to get involved. It's actually not true. This is their part of being in Star Wars. And they go march in parades, and they do telethons and things like that. There's another subset that, hey, a fan film comes along, count me in. And one of those guys is Mark, Mark Van Slake. Mark uh, plays clone trooper number one to 1,000. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, his credits will be pretty immense. He also is an Imperial officer. A biker scout, yeah. stormtrooper, yeah, Captain Brill. Uh, so he has several, several different uh, personas in the movie. Most of them having masks on, so you don't know it's the same guy over and over and over. And plus, being clone trooper number one to one thousand uh, means a lot of crowd duplication because we only have one clone trooper in the entire Chicago land, and this calls for. The Death Star plans are not in the main computer. Say something else. Let me see your identification. You don't need my identification. We don't need to see your identification. How well can you see out of this helmet? I, I can't really look down. <laughs> I can see all right, but you can't really, you know, I have to kind of bend down. Can you see. hear people in this? Um, I actually have a little thing I usually wear, like these little earbuds, and there's a little oh. hearing thing that goes right here. I see your voice. There's a little thing here for yeah, your voice. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, do that again. So now when I talk, it amplifies it. Oh. Now that little. Are you doing that? No, that's the board in the helmet. I got a little fan in here too, but I don't really need it right now. Yeah, there's a little CPU fan right there. Does it really help? It, make um, it keeps the, the eyepieces from fogging up real bad. Oh, okay. There's actually a, a lot of work getting this dirty. <laughs> so you, did you buy clean and made it dirty? Yeah. Was it actually sand or something like that? There's actually dirt in there, yeah. I mean, if you can feel the, the hand piece. Oh, it is, you're right. It's, really it's called Fuller's Earth. It's used for like in models and props and stuff. Um, but there's like three different pigments. It's like a burnt umber. Uh, some other umber and then uh, yellow ochre. So it's actually fake dirt. Yeah. Now, have you always been a sand trooper? No, when I first did this, I was a storm trooper. And then since then, I've been. What made you dirty. change to sand? Sand troopers look cool. <laughs> <laughs> other places we don't. Uh, at Fermilab, Minos. Uh, Minos is the main injector neutrino oscillation program, it's 360 feet underground. It was bored, what, about five years ago? I finished about. Yeah, about five years ago. 
Uh, basically, a lot of dynamite and blasting. Tunnel boring yeah, tunnel boring machines. Uh, so 360 feet underground, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a tunnel that leads to the experiment. Uh, one thing you don't see is that the tunnel actually goes like this. So those, they're actually leaning back. Um, yeah, we the bathrooms, if you have to go to the bathroom, make sure you go before you go down because it's only upstairs. Uh, oh. So you have to plan. Okay. No food, no cigarettes. Um, well, yeah, no food, no cigarettes, no drinks. No booze, okay. No booze. Um, you're going to be escorted by the operators that are in the room, number one. So if you haven't been trained, the operators have been that, are, that work for the lab, number one. You're 360 feet underground, guys. And the biggest thing I ask is that you just pay attention to what's going on. If he's going down the shaft, just be careful he doesn't get hurt. You know? <laughs> Anything you do, don't get hurt. Um, Ted, Bruce, Max, and I are going to go down. And uh, anybody else? Trying to think of anything else. I think that's it. The only thing. Thank you very much. Have fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. On. Basically, if you go up in the absorb when you go up in the absorber passageway, it's about a 10% grade. So just watch how you're walking. I mean, it's it's fairly steep, so you just want to watch your footing. Everything is pretty much clear in there. Just uh, head on up anyway, because uh, uh, I know uh, it's clear about the water uh, running running down here. And the water runs through these little gutters, you know. It's good water too. And at some point, as Bruce is moved, put into this, Spader's going to take the advantage and push you through those doors. That's where the next scene comes in, where we'll film later. magnetic field. So when you're downstairs, you said you're going to stay on the upstream side of the red line. Yeah. There's a red line right on the floor with some signs. Just don't go past that. It's not going to hurt you if you do. Um, it's about a five gauss field that's on the other side. So unless you have an implant, a stent, something like that, then you really don't want to go on that side. But if you're, if you're healthy, even your credit card should be okay on that side. But we want to keep you on the other side of the line, mainly for equipment at that point. Yep, they're doing their stretches.
down to the side. And you should pump straight out as you get along. So you should go to the left side, start from the back. <laughs> you you do 
a, you'll see a reaction from him. I'll clap when, when for you to start moving, you guys can move like this. Yeah, that's pretty good. There you go. That's a keeper. Well, he's going to do what would be the most obvious killing strike. 
the most quickest thing. And it, he's going to come up and he's going to come right like that. Uh -huh. And so you've got to pick this thing up, not like this, because then he just chops through your hand sure. and your head. You've got to bring it up like this. And you've probably seen Malik use this a couple of times, so you know sort of how he holds it. But I would suggest, just to show your ignorance, is you put both hands together, almost right on top of each other. And then, but you got to make sure, because if this, any part of this is over your head, sure, sure. that's done. That so is, you got to have this. It's going to be aiming right. there, so I want to. Yes, but, keep him in that okay. right, but you're going to have to use two hands because too he's too strong. If you're doing it with one hand, nobody's going to believe it. Said, Where did this guy come from? No, they're going to say, that guy's bad <laughs> ass. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't land on this one. Don't, don't look like what happened. Down, don't be a fool. So you don't need me anymore. No, we're done. We're done. Thanks, Boogie. isn't running, the magnet isn't on, so none of the, you know, the red line really doesn't make a difference to you, any of that stuff right now. But there is construction down there, so what I ask you to do is just be careful um, in any of the areas where you're walking, because what I don't want to do is have somebody get hurt, then we have to end up calling somebody out there. Everybody's uh, up for uh, seeing a little bit of the footage that we uh, edited together. <coughs> Very cool. who is a martial artist, especially a, a laser sword master, doesn't stand up the way Max would have stood up at that point. Mm -hmm. He would have stood up in, a, in a, a more defensive posture. So I'll have to show him that. They have some scenes where actually you're acting like you're pushing him down and you're retreating, but you guys got to remember that maybe you think you're doing that, but you know you're drawing him this way. Okay. And then they're going to walk down a little bit further, and then there's a fight scene, and then walk a little bit further, and then there'll either be one fight fight scene or the fight scene before the door. Okay. Okay. You're going to come like this. You're going to be coming like this. Remember, you remember your signature pose. Yes. Okay. So you're going to come like this. You're going to come like this. You're going to take a step. You're going to come down to a strike. You're going to step forward to a lunge. You're going to step forward to a strike again. And then you're going to step forward and do another lunge. So I'm hesitant to show you the other things. I like to do this. And then go to the Have you guys heard any more about the NASA film? The NASA film? NASA Star Wars film. Uh, the last I heard was last time when uh, Darren looked on the page and it said, we're going to make ours like a month before that cockamamie group at Fermilab. I, think that <laughs> but I don't think they quiet. named us, but... <laughs> I think that guy's messing with Darren. I think so. You know, it's, the, the, it's just, it's too, like, 
resonant with what Darren's doing. He's sitting in the base and we're saying, oh, we're going to get our thing done. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> now, if that was a good laser sword, it wouldn't have bothered you at all. <laughs> do it nice and slow, okay? It's two feet. You understand what you do here, and then we can speed it up a little bit. But eventually, it doesn't have to be fast, but it has to be fluid. Tell me about your film. <laughs> and all I said back is that it's between episodes three and four. That's what I told him. And that's about it. I think he's. I think he's. Yeah, I kind of wonder if he's not it doesn't sound, a It doesn't sound mm -hmm. authentic. It sounds like somebody that's just having a, mm -hmm. a laugh at your expense. Is this the guy from Florida? No. So, well, they got a site up now. And they do have some footage on it. So, really? Yeah. They have their site up. Yeah. It's halfway finished, I should say. Half of the links you can't click on. What's the footage? He said he's he's got a deadline of December 2008 because I had put out there versus January 2009. All of it is shot on location inside the shuttle. <laughs> so, so what I did in an e email I sent back to him, I said, yeah, we're um, we're shifting our uh, release date to June of 2009. And we're gonna try and undercut that. We can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, reel him in, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, surprise, we're ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, okay, send him an invite. <laughs> You're, of course, <laughs> invited to the screening of it. <laughs> yeah, just send him the invite. Invite. Mm -hmm. If you get uh, the uh, public broadcast, <laughs> <laughs> turn on your TV to channel 43. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're also going to try and have the. Uh, for the premiere, we'll be over at the high rise at the auditorium. If we can get um, it. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have talked with them about it already. She has good. We should have stormtroopers guarding all the doors and everything. Too. Well, a couple people offered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Hey, we can come I'll, out. I'll do that. Do you, do you know when he started filming? Though? He started he filming this, this year. Yeah. There's a little bit of who he is on there. Mm -hmm. He has a picture, you know, link, link to it and shows him his family. And the dog. <laughs> uh, if we can find a street address, we just go out, you know, we just take an EMP. Like a magnetic pulse machine. Boom! Oh, his oh, oh, footage is gone! Everything back here. I don't, I don't understand how it happened. Sorry about your computer. I heard you had a problem with it. Isn't that weird? That's a really good shot. But I mean, we're totally screwed. I'll grab them. We're just looking how totally screwed we are. It's just clear plastic with a bunch of rough material that keeps falling as we keep putting it up. But it's not roof roof, it's we're trying to seal the roof for a new detector we're putting in. So gravity takes over sometimes when you're when you're put when you're kinda trowling this stuff on. You put it on and then it just falls down. So mm -hmm. you see that one? Oh, sorry. Yeah. The one before that? Yeah. That's uh Yeah, that we just can't get a shot. Now see that would work better than the regular helmet. <laughs> I guess I, I can see stick and he lit. I actually hit my padding and my helmet is from an old hockey helmet. So you could probably hit me with that helmet on and I'd be alright. It's 
better after after this after he, no after he gets the strike okay on his head which we could put in earlier than what I was expecting we could put it in this very next scene and then they could have another mm -hmm. of the three I'm thinking there's three things here before we get to the door which is the last one okay All right. we could put that one into that part right there but then that's the part where then we're gonna need the makeup okay that's fine Real big. Yeah. How's the helmet? <laughs> did you get his helmet? Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, it wasn't a hard contact, but I did definitely yeah. did. You know, you're still pressing wills and skills against each other, and you can have these things, comments, and then you can do the next three strikes and you can throw them in again. So you see this content, and then you will not leave this planet, or you will not leave this planet alive. Essentially, yeah. all right, and you can get burned at that point. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, good. Yeah, but that's the point they when really it flips, right? The, that... No, no, that's the flip is down there. Okay. And here's something else I want to speak about. We commented about those doors. They were going to be open or closed. Okay, they're closed now. They've been closed all this way too. I think that after he burns him, Vader takes a moment, goes back, does his force things. And we have somebody down there opening the doors somehow. Can we do that? I don't know if that how we're going to communicate that, but we had to do that at some point, and this would be a good point because that would be the next one. The next scene would be in front of them, the open doors, where he's having his way and turning the whole thing around. My doors are locked. Come on, I want to shoot in the big elephant doors that are at the shaft end that show you up the emergency walkway, you can open them. Okay. We call them elephant doors because they're the same doors at uh, Lincoln Park Zoo. So, <laughs> contractor rebuilt Lincoln Park Zoo with the elephant house, so we use the same doors in our facility. Nice! Yeah. Okay, here's the creepy skin. We got the skin. But there should be like a palette, like makeup. like this. It's harder for him to hold that unless he changes his position, steps forward. And the person with the, the power will control this until they get around. Okay? Because if you don't, the thing comes in like this and then slice through the person. This is in regular sword play. This is going to be something similar. We have to be very careful when we're doing this, though, not to get the things up here like this because that wouldn't work because you know that just a little thing like that will get them. So it's, it's got to be off like this, where, where swords are like this, and you guys have, we're going to have to practice this a lot so that you can show because we can't actually put a lot of force in it. And this is not a strength thing. This is a matter of balance in real swordsmanship and a matter of will for you two guys. And Darth is the stronger. And he's got you down there. And he's already injured you once. Yeah. So now it comes the end. I watch more so more so in concert, so. <laughs>
special signs. And like a coffee cake. Awesome. The thing is that his controvert costume is in episode three, which means the helmet is different. So we got that. Oh look, we have an old band-aid. Yeah, there's an old one. Ahead. <laughs> so we can know what to make the, the, one the, the new one. one. Yeah, I don't think we want to put this on anybody's. I'm done with defragging. I'm done with Adware. I'm done with viruses. I'm done with. What'd you do, buy a mat? Yeah. <laughs> it's great. I love it. It's great. What are those, Aaron? The software we have, we can do match moving. We can actually have a grid on the blue screen, another grid that we can key out later on. Uh, we'll move the camera in the scene. And we tell After Effects to look at these reference points and come up with, recreate that geometry. And then we apply it to the background. Uh. <laughs> what? I teach good great. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. We use a lot of software. Icarus is a motion tracking package. If I take a camera, and go like this, Icarus can actually track it. Icarus was developed for, uh, oddly enough, for crime scene reconstruction. People started recognizing that, well, this is, pretty po this is pretty powerful, not just for crime scene reconstruction, but you can actually take now your raw footage, track it, so you can film this camera movement, and now you have a CG plate as well, or camera setup, that will behave the same way. So if the camera moves like this in the scene that you just filmed, camera and Lightwave will do the same exact thing. It's actually freeware. Uh, unless there's something I'm talking into. No, you're not. You know. you're, you're addressing them from on top of this clip, basically. Action! Crew boss, and hop! Action. Troops. The evil we swore to defeat has triumphed. So that our visitors can continue the... Sorry. You're out. Where, where do I go out of the blue screen? Actually, I, I guess you're right there, right there. I'm right making sure that these dots are in the background and always in the background. Turn a galaxy against its oppressors. Oh boy, that's nice and saturated. I like that. Sounds like a crystal mic. Well, it's got to be, it's got to be belted out. That's the one thing I know. It's got to be belted out. Yeah, we're all gonna die. And, you know, that's pretty bad. But yeah. you guys rock. All right, we're our time. <laughs> I have here from Darth Vader <laughs> an instrument of peace. Yeah. Oh, oh. Scene 88, shot one, take one. Here you can see before and after, but that's a background plate just of an interior of a TIE fighter. <laughs> it's actually generated using Lightwave 3D. It's a package basically that Hollywood uses. You can you can take a ship. There's actually a whole group of people out there that make ships. That this is a hobby of theirs. They make them in CG and they put them out there for people to use. That Star Destroyer took a guy a year and a half to do. And when he was done, he can't make any money off of it because it's proprietary. Because it actually belongs to Lucas. So what he, what's he do? He just says, hey, I did this. Here's what I can do. He can put it in his portfolio and get a great job. But also, he, has, he put it out on the web. And that, that's great. <laughs> Otherwise, this would take 10 years to make these things. One of our ships, uh, called the Sarko, this is the ship that we're using. In Lightwave, you have the camera. You move that camera anywhere in the scene that you want. You can keyframe the camera and keyframe the ship, so you can have the ship going by and you can have the camera track it, so you can have the camera follow it, or you can have the camera go past it while, while the ship goes by. I can have the ship start tumbling out of control, pull the camera back, or I can have the ship go away from the camera to get the same effect. And this thing knows where the light sources are and all the shines? I set up the light the sources. sources. The ship, the engines themselves are light sources as well. So you tell it where you want the light sources to be, and the 
image came off the internet for free. Yeah. The, the model came off the internet for free. This is actually a planet. The, the continents are actually made, uh, taken from a uh, uh, picture of Montana. Took a picture of Montana, started cutting it up uh, in uh, Photoshop. Came up with some continents. Essentially, I grabbed coastlines of Asia, started filling those in, mapped it to a sphere. The clouds come from the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. And then we put a, a blue glow around it, which is the atmosphere. Here, this frame at the bottom of the TIE fighters and the asteroids, generated in light wave, that one frame took, what was it? Was that? When we first did it on the one computer, computer. that one took uh, a week or two. A week on one frame. To it's render. Very, to render. That was a very. That was a dual Athlon. Yeah. It was an antique system. Yeah. We've we've upgraded to uh, two other machines since then. I was thinking a week for a movie, but a week for a frame. Yeah. That's 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 an EXR format, and each each one of those frames came in almost was it a gig I think, and we were we had maxed that we maxed out. Easily. You can import real footage into here and it would do camera moves against it. No, I, I export it from here and put it into After Effects. You can do a lot of stuff with After Effects. Basically, it lets you bring in your raw footage. You, you've take, you have your raw footage already <laughs> saved on your computer. You bring it into Adobe After Effects. You can also composite live action and CG. That's what After Effects really was made for, is compositing. What you're actually seeing here is the same prairie burn twice. You're seeing the background part of it, and then we cut out a portion here that's in the foreground. So now it looks like the ship is actually sandwiched in between. So when this actually runs, it just billows. You get a nice 3D type of you know, perspective. Attack. One more time. Right, left. This is a lightsaber. It actually is, we got this off of eBay for about $35. It belongs to one of those that actually light up people carrying them in parades. We ripped the guts out of it and essentially put a you know, piece of metal in there, drilled, bored it out, and got a $2 piece of aluminum from uh, Radio Shack or wherever the piece. Uh, so this actually doubles. You know, Jedi carries this in the scene. When it's time for a lightsaber fight, or whatever to have this ignited. We put this in, tighten it down, and when we film it, he's holding it like this. Everywhere he moves in the frame, we have to match that in After Effects. So we're filming at 29.97 uh, frames per second. You have to do that, and match it, because if you don't, you will see it. So you, you, there's nothing that says find the red and replace it with. The People have tried to do that, and it just doesn't work. This is a shot of uh, Max and Ted down in the tunnel. You can see, here's what it looks like, first frame. Now, rotoscoping. So come over to here, I can go click, click, and I'm going to create a mask. When I come down, I close, say I want to close this mask, invert, and I've masked out the lightsaber. After that, I'm going to basically give it a Gaussian uh, blur. And then you take three more steps of blur. Essentially, you duplicate those three steps, increasing the blur each step, change the color, you have a lightsaber. Now, well, Darth Vader's lightsaber shouldn't be white. Head up. And you have a lightsaber. Sorry. And then we'll take you one hour. Um, fast, and fast forward, yeah. If you're really I getting mean, a lot of for coffee a, for a five-second clip, yeah, okay. for a five-second clip, you've got you've got a, well times thirty, right? So mm -hmm. five seconds times thirty frames per second, um, yeah. So you can get through that in, in a couple hours or so. Five seconds is a nice Yeah, it's a ten-minute fight scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's it's a long fight scene actually. Yeah, uh, it 
This goes down the tunnel and into the experimental hall. It goes into the experimental hall. So that's weeks worth of rotoscoping to get that lightsaber and a 10 minute fight. Well, you get enough people. Just that one lightsaber, too. Yeah. That's that just, one. yeah, that's just that one lightsaber. You got to just. Sure. This is without sound effects. You can hear clack, clack, clack. We've already put the, the swords on. So that, people can be talking in the background. Listen they are. Right. Actually, um, if we turn it up, you'll hear. No. No. Middle. Middle. High. High. No. Gap. Then, you know, once we get that segment done, then there'll be music added to it as well. You gotta put some Darth Vader breathing in, you know, <laughs> tunnel sounds, you know, all types of stuff like that. Wanna see some footage? Our workflow, this is how our workflow looks, and it's uh, kind of monstrous. We actually cap, so we capture the video uh, through Premiere. Uh, we'll go ahead and capture it, you know, 720 by 480. Once we get it in Premiere, we then send all the footage, uh, deinterlace it in Premiere, and send it to After Effects. So we deinterlace it, put it in After Effects, set the aspect ratio, and then color correct. If there's rotoscoping, then we do that. Key out the blue screen, depending if that's in there as well. Uh, we composite layers together. If we have a CG background and live action in the foreground, we composite it, and then we render it. Once that rendered shot is done, we send it back to Premiere. And then the audio will go through ADR, so we'll get the actors to redo all their lines uh, in a studio. Uh, that way we don't have the background hiss or we don't have the background noise. When you're 360 feet underground and you got lightsabers clacking, it, it's very accurate. But we'll take the audio that was recorded, the, the actor will put on headphones, listen to what he said, and repeat it into a microphone in a studio setting. And how do you deal with, you know, getting the sound of, you know, a guy 20 feet out in the field as opposed to sitting in so, ADR? Uh, we have, we have, we have, mic we have the call. wireless mics that we okay. can put in, into armor. So those guys who are wearing armor, or if we have uh, Max who's out in the middle of a field saying something, uh, we have the wireless mics. Finally, the music. We have a person that is going to do all of our music. Another person works at Fermilab, uh, Wally Kissel, and he's agreed to it. He goes, he basically said the other day, uh, yeah, I listened to Star Wars again. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, are you up for it? He goes, there's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're going to, when we, uh, when we finish the product, we will have, uh, we will have uh, uh, our original music with it. So once the audio comes back in, then you can take your, your video, your audio, put them together. So you have an audio track and a video track, merge them together, uh, create that shot, and then assemble all of the scenes, render all the scenes together, and then you have a completed movie. So, um, sorry, continues. Uh, so our goal is basically, uh, complete principal photography by October 1st. It's a goal. Margaret has set that she, 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 <laughs> this year. Uh, we have a little bit to go. We are, we've actually ramped up the number of times we've, we've been filming. Uh, in 2006, we you know, filmed probably six times. 2007, quite a bit. This year, oh my gosh. It's, it's almost every week, every other week. We want to finish the movie by March of next year. Then in April, uh, we'll premiere it on Fox Valley TV and submit it to the fan film contest, which the rumor has it, well, I should say, Chicago's in the running for next year's Star Wars convention. It'd be great. We could submit it and be a hometown type of film. Then after that, we're going to uh, distribute it to the internet.
it's it's you know from our very beginning taking on a full feature length film without having something you know Did under you our belt already. Be this big when you got into it. I didn't. I didn't even know if I could. Get, I saw what. I basically went out and looked at resources. Okay. I saw there were there, there were like twenty baiters in the Chicago land area. Okay, odds are I can get one. Mm -hmm. There are 40, 50 stormtroopers in the Chicago land area. Odds are I can get a few. You know, you know it's you know, everybody who's volunteered has, has just been very dedicated. I really appreciate it. It's, it's a learning experience and it's been a lot of fun.